Hello, on this week's episode of the Lake Hill City Birds, we're going to talk about hummingbirds, their food, and feeders. I don't know about you, but I love it when hummingbirds visit my backyard. I've tried several different feeders through the years. This one has been used a whole lot, as you can tell. I do not use it anymore. I need to replace the bottom. I bought it because it was pretty with a sunflower painted on it. It's glass with a plastic bottom. It was the only hummingbird feeder I had hanging on my porch at my previous house for years. And the hummingbirds used it. My issue with this one is that it is hard to clean. You need a bottle brush to clean it, and it's still difficult to get all the areas clean. It's also difficult to get the base back on after it's been cleaned. I do like that it has a built-in ant moat on top. You just fill this with water to keep the ants out of the nectar. Also, hummingbirds don't need that much nectar. When I first started feeding hummingbirds, I would fill it all the way up. Then I learned I needed to change the nectar out every few days or at least weekly, especially in the heat of the summer. If the nectar starts turning cloudy, then it's time to replace it. That's why it's best to make this yourself with sugar and water. If you buy the stuff with a red dye, you won't be able to tell when it needs to be changed because you can't tell when it's cloudy. And also, it isn't healthy for the hummingbirds. I guess they put red coloring in hummingbird nectar because hummingbirds are attracted to the color red. But most feeders are red, and they will visit them without the nectar being red. Okay, and I bought this one at Rock City, of course, and it's glass. It's very pretty hanging in my garden, and when I had this one and the sunflower one hanging on my porch, the hummingbirds always visited the sunflower one. When I removed the sunflower one, then the hummingbirds would visit the Rock City one since it was the only one available. This one is also difficult to clean. It's even more difficult than the sunflower one, and I also think it needs a perch or something for the birds to use, and that's probably why they won't use it when there's other feeders available. When we moved to this house last year, I bought this hummingbird feeder. It is actually rings. I was trying to get up close and personal with the hummingbirds by having this ring on my finger for them to eat out of. I came very close a few times. The hummingbirds love this feeder. It has a nice perch all the way around it, and I love it because it's low profile, so I get good photos no matter what side the hummingbird decides to feed from. These rings only hold a small amount of nectar, which is good because I have to change it out every few days anyway. These flower tops get mildew on them, and then I have to wash them with soap and water individually. And the holes in the top of these flowers are a little too big, and insects do get down in the nectar sometimes. This was the hummingbird's favorite feeder until I got this one. This is the last one of the feeders I've tried. I leave the ring one and the Rock City one up in other areas around the yard because some hummingbirds are territorial and they will run each other off from the feeders. So I have them spread out around the yard so they can all feed if needed. This one is simple to clean. The entire top pops off. I wash it when it's needed. The nectar goes in the bottom and the top just pops back on. There's a perch all the way around and plenty of flowers for the hummingbirds to choose from. There's also an ant moat in the middle. You just fill it with water to keep the ants out of the nectar. And there's nothing to block my view of the hummingbirds and I like that because I love to sit in my backyard taking photos. My only issue with this one is it hangs a little crooked. But the hummingbirds don't seem to mind. I'm sure I could put some sort of weight on the high side to level it out, but I haven't done that yet. One thing I've learned about hummingbird feeders, bird baths and bird feeders, is it isn't about getting the prettiest feeder or bath. It's about getting the easiest to clean with the best view of the birds from all sides and something that they actually are going to use and enjoy. Now out of the four that I have as far as hummingbird feeders, this one is number one. And did you know that hummingbirds have a very speedy metabolism and they eat half of their body weight in bugs and nectar, feeding every 10 to 15 minutes and visiting 1,000 to 2,000 flowers per day. I have flowers planted all around my yard for them to enjoy too. I've seen them feeding on my bee balm, daylilies, petunias, and impatiens. And here are some of my impatience. It's been raining a lot. Haven't been able to get out here and weed my garden, so my flowers are kind of being taken over by the weeds. Hopefully I'll get that taken care of this week. Also, it's super easy to make your own hummingbird nectar. All you do is boil one cup of water, mix in a fourth a cup of refined white sugar, and you want to do that until it's dissolved. Then you cool it, and then you fill your feeders. If you have a big feeder, don't fill it completely up because you're just going to have to change it out in a few days anyway. If you keep clean nectar available for the hummingbirds, they will show up. Remember, you don't need to use red food coloring and also don't use honey because it can promote fungal growth. Just use plain white sugar. 
I usually make more than I need for my feeder, so I will store it in the fridge in a glass jar for a few days until it's time for me to refill my feeders. Ruby-throated are the hummingbirds I have in my backyard. This video shows a male and a female. The male has the bright red throat. The ruby-throated hummingbirds is the only breeding hummingbird in eastern North America. In the winter, they migrate south to Central America. Some migrate over the Gulf of Mexico and others go through Texas and around the coast. So during migration season, keep those feeders filled. They need the energy to travel that long trip. I hope you found this helpful. If you have hummingbird photos you would like to share, I'm on Instagram. Just tag me in the photo or email me your photo and I'd be glad to post it to my account and give you credit for the photo. You can find my email, my Instagram, all of my information on my about page. I love to see what type of birds you have in your area of the world. Every Monday I have an episode of the Lake Hill City Birds, every Wednesday a cooking video. So thanks for stopping by. Until next time, I hope y'all have a blessed day.